All right, y'all, what's going on? Welcome. Let's get into the healing. So today we're going to talk about what healing looks like for complex PTSD and narcissistic abuse. If you're tuning in, you're likely looking to better to understand your healing path or find ways to help support yourself in the journey. And healing from trauma, um, especially complex trauma, is a process that takes time, but luckily with the right tools and practices, it can feel less overwhelming. And it actually gives you a hope and it gives you a direction and it gives you somewhere really to start, um, to start applying things rather than just hearing about it. And I, I think that's the problem with like, we hear constantly on podcasts and et cetera, et cetera, like what it means to do the work and heal your inner child and you have to heal and you have to love yourself. But what does that actually look like? So we are going to go over like what healing looks like. And then after this video, again, as I promised, we're going to go into that EFT tapping video and um, have an exercise ready for you, ready to go to where you can actually start applying and doing child inner work and start the healing process to get you started. So it, it can feel less overwhelming when we are actually in the midst of it all, right? So let's explore what that journey looks like and dive into some powerful methods that can help. <clears throat> so healing from PTSD, complex PTSD, what does that look like? So what it takes healing from complex PTSD and narcissistic abuse isn't just about finding a quick fix. It's about making a commitment to yourself to gradually release stored pain. So think of it like um, chipping away at a rock, right? So like as we go more and more in with the sledgehammer or whatever we're using, right? We're getting out little, little pieces over and over again. We're starting to dismantle it all. And the more reps we put in and the more we show up for our inner child, the more we're actually starting to dive in and to actually do the healing work. So it's not something that's just going to happen overnight, but with consistency and repetition, what we are doing is we're establishing and making that our predominant thought and our predominant belief system. Because think about it, we think maybe 70, 80,000 thoughts a day, or maybe more, I think 90,000. Um, and most of it's on autopilot and it, it's stored in our subconscious. So we're just going off of essentially a program. And so what we're doing is we're going underneath when we do healing, we're going underneath at the core and essentially re getting the gunk out and reinstalling a new program. So the most important agree that sorry, the most important ingredients to healing your inner child is consistency and self compassion and the willingness to face and process what might have been buried for a long time. And this process involves facing not only the impact of recent relationships, but also the deeper layers that may connect to past wounds, like our family relationships, where we may have learned early on to doubt ourselves or equate love with conditional acceptance. So when I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients, um, you know, usually they are coming from a narcissistic relationship or a recent relationship um, where they were abandoned and they're feeling a low sense of self-worth or they go through, they notice these toxic patterns of this and they're feeling incredibly low. So what I do with my clients is normally I go from like the most recent, I find that I find the childhood connection, but what they want immediately is immediate relief. So I will tend to focus and do EFT tapping and coaching specifically on um, the recent relationship that they feel the most uh, relevant to, that they feel the most uh, attached to in the moment that feels fresh. I usually work there and then we'll start to connect the pieces back to childhood. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can go in different layers and we can do healing on literally anything. Um, so first, healing from complex PTSD and narcissistic abuse is not an easy or quick fix, as we know. It's a tough process that requires steady work and patience. And it's just essentially showing up for that inner child, right? So there's no shortcuts. Um, it's just even on days where it's hard and committing to dealing with painful stuff that's being stored up. But the art of showing up consistently for our inner child that is lacking self-worth is letting our soul know that we are building value in this inner child. And when we consistently show up for ourselves and show up for that inner child doing the work, we create value and worth around this child, right? So start visualizing 
um, coming in, maybe like behind a door or something like that, and coming into this little inner child that you don't know much about, but you know it's you, but you don't know who this child is. And you're thinking like, man, like you see them getting neglected or you see them getting abused and you wouldn't just let a child sit there. No, you would go in and be like, what the heck is going on? Like, what are you doing? Right? So you need to be that child's hero essentially. And that's what we're doing when we're doing the inner child work. We're visiting our past and we are accepting and giving self-forgiveness to the situation. We are showing that child compassion, right? And, and self-acceptance. And then we are nurturing it with the right ingredients and then reframing a new story that serves us and serves that inner child, which is us essentially, because think of our mind like the present and our body like the past and our stored trauma is the past. And so we feel disconnected between the mind and the body. And then that is when we truly start to feel the mind body connection, because rather than ignoring or running away from that inner child, we are getting to know and connect with them again in a loving and nurturing way. And this is the key ingredient and the key visualization, the key mindset that enables true healing. So essentially all we are doing is restoring, you know, stimulating our parasympathetic nervous system, regulating it, knowing that we're in a safe space to do the healing work. Then we revisit, we lean into the discomfort, the pain, we give self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, and then we be grateful for that trauma being there because it was served to protect us, but then we must be able to then process it, release it, and then finish it off with the cherry on top by rewiring the new story in our beliefs. So second, it's not just about healing the latest relationship, right? So again, as we know, it often goes deeper and often we're working through wounds from way back, sometimes even family patterns from where first we'd learn to doubt ourselves or even chase conditional love. And it, it's intense work, but allowing it and facing it allows us to build real self-worth and finally break those patterns. So reconnecting with your child, what healing looks like. One of the foundational aspects of healing is reconnecting with your inner child. We've been bringing up inner child a lot. So now the inner child represents a younger version of yourself, a part of you that learned how to navigate the world based on your early experiences, not who you are right now, but based on how you perceive the world when you were a child. So healing the inner child means revisiting, like I said earlier, revisiting those early parts of ourselves and giving them the love and the safety and the validation and the nurturing that they didn't receive back then. So healing is your opportunity, like I said, to become the hero that they always wanted and that they needed in order to survive. So you're going back there and you're redoing things and you're revisiting it and you're reinstalling essentially a new code for the trauma in your body. So as adults, we often carry those beliefs and those wounds with us because we didn't process them. And so they, you know, become like heavy luggage on us and we just carry it with us. And as adults, you know, we, we carry those beliefs, especially if we are, if we experienced any type of like conditional love or emotional neglect as a child, which often leads us in the cases that resonate with you, right. To being addicted to those narcissistic patterns. And so by treating ourselves with compassion and working to heal this inner child, we start to break down patterns of shame, unworthiness, or people pleasing that may have developed as a result. Because if we reverse engineer it and reinstall new pathways, then we can learn to be more present, live in the present moment, feel safe, increase that mind body cohesion and that coherence. And then when we connect the mind and the body, we're not traumatized and we're more present and we're more free in the current moment, right? Where there's limitless potential in us. And so the basics of somatic healing. So I, I kind of touched on this a little bit, but let's get into this. So now a central a part um, component of this healing process is somatic or body-based healing. So remember when I was talking about bottom-up approach um, and top-down approach, somatic healing helps do that bottom-up approach. And so trauma affects not only your thoughts, but also our bodies. And it can stay locked up in our nervous system and our muscles, like we talked about earlier. And that's what traditional talk therapy, um, while helpful, sometimes it feels like it's um, not enough because it doesn't always reach those deeper body stored responses. And when I say body stored responses, 
I'm talking about that knee jerk reaction, that impulse, that, that, um, trauma response, that trigger response that we get. And remember triggers, as we said before, is our inner child, a part of our inner child that has not been fully processed. And so when we may feel anxious or re-triggered or when a narcissist comes to us and, and, they, and they pinpoint at us and they say, you're a piece of shit or you're, you know, like you're the lowest person in the world, or I can't believe that, um, you know, I'm dating you. And like, and it triggers a response in us to be like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Like, and we get reactive because of that. So it's not necessarily what the stimuli is, is doing in front of us, what the narcissist is doing. It's also us that is reacting to that because we have unhealed wounds in our body. And so what somatic healing works on is releasing that tension, regulating our breathing, and it helps us feel safe in our bodies again. And so we're going back to that inner child. We're feeling safe in our bodies. And when we're doing this, it allows us and that inner child to feel safe again. And when we feel safe again, then we can redirect the new story. And so this can be done through practices like deep breathing or gentle movement or specific techniques to calm our stress response. There's many things to it. But what I love about EFT tapping, which we'll go into a little bit, is the effects that it has with not just somatic healing and regulating our nervous system, but cognitive function to be able to um, reinstill and rewire new neural pathways to start the healing process and to change our beliefs and our dominant thoughts about our belief system. And so somatic healing can help us let go of the fight or flight response that many tra trauma survivors are often stuck in, which is especially helpful when healing from narcissistic abuse or complex PTSD and or. So cognitive and somatic blending. So understanding EFT tapping. Right. So, so again, I said, it's a mixture. EFT tapping is a mixture of cognitive and somatic blending. So one of the most powerful tools for combining cognitive and somatic blending approaches is EFT tapping or emotional freedom technique tapping. So I am an emotional freedom technique tapping practitioner. And so EFT tapping, it works by blending cognitive elements like leaning into discomfort, um, processing, thought processing, affirming, and reprocessing our thoughts um, with physical elements like tapping on specific parts of the body. And in the next video, I'm going to show you the actual tapping points. So this technique allows us to talk to our emotions and our body simultaneously. So when we're tapping, we're talking. So we're cognitively functioning, talking to our mind but we're also talking to our body because it's helping that mind body connection and it's talking right. Our body connection is our past trauma, our innate knee jerk response or physiological trigger response that we get. Right. And because when we get triggered, we get, you know, the, the um, hands might start to um, sweat or our heart rate gets up or we start to feel like our whole body is just like shutting down or we might get incredibly fearful or nervous. So it talks to that too. And so we're having like dual conversations going on at once. We're talking to the mind and the body and it's giving a way to release the emotions and the fears associated with whatever trauma or story or belief system with what we choose to talk about in the EFT tapping session. And so we have these points in our body called meridian points. And so based on traditional Chinese medicine, um, meridian points are connected to energy pathways right? Not woo woo science. There's actually energetic nervous system, chemical impulses, right? Pathways, um, that are connected in all of the body that help stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is all about rest and digestion and regulation and feeling safe, which also stimulates the vagal nerve. So, um, meridian points are connected to energy pathways and tapping on these specific points while thinking of a specific negative emotion or thought can have a calming effect. So rather than saying, why do I suck? Why do I uh, constantly attract these narcissists? Why am I never enough? Why do I always keep trolling? Why am I always in these failed relationships? Just simply tapping on that and addressing those feelings does have a calming effect. And then, so we associate that more with calm instead of hating ourselves and, you know, being so angry at ourselves or having a negative impulse reaction towards it. And so we're essentially activating the body's energy pathways and addressing the trauma at its root. 
And so when we tap, it sends a signal to the brain, specifically to the amygdala, the front part of the brain right here, that's all about fight, flight, freeze, fawn response, and that scanning system for being hyperallergent, uh, hypervigilant for threats, right? With which, which we cultivated as a child from the chaotic environments that we grew up in. And so, um, like the amygdala is responsible for processing threats and emotions, and it lets us know that we are safe. And then, so as a result, this calms our bodies and then our stress response, which has been overreacted by a constant state of complex trauma. So think about it in the back of our mind, when we experience complex trauma, if it's happening for years, we might be just a little tense about everything ongoing for years and years and years. And then it spikes when we get a trauma response, but overall we're experiencing it chronically. And so just tapping alone lets us know that we are safe in relation to the topic that we're tapping on. So before we begin the EFT tapping session, um, I want you to know that in the next video, I'll be guiding you through the tapping points first. So it's going to be a shorter video. And then these are specific areas in the body. Like I said, the meridian lines, right? That um, help release emotional tension and trauma while tapping on it, while focusing on your thoughts and your feelings. So you don't need to mem memorize um, or like worry about memorizing them right now. I'll walk you through each step by step in the video. And then in the next video after that, we're actually going to do the EFT tapping exercise that is going to make you feel immediately a better sense of relief in the body and um, in the mind. And it's going to help you calm down a little bit. And it's going to make you feel hopeful about getting out of a narcissistic abusive relationship and, and the CTPTSD that comes around it. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to make you feel a little bit worthy. We're going to be tapping on kind of a, a couple topics that I feel like everybody as a whole can relate to. And again, I do EFT tapping with my clients as one of the many things that I do with coaching. Um, I, I do specific tailored tapping to their particular situation. So in this video exercise, I'm going to kind of hit on a lot of points that I feel like a lot of people in this course can all genuinely relate to. Um, so it's going to be more of a general tapping, but I'm telling you, you're going to feel immediate relief. I recommend doing it just for the next few days, like twice a day. Um, and then you'll start to feel shift immediately, but you'll start to feel a deeper shift the more times you do it over the next few days. So I encourage you again, start with it, feel the immediate relief, and then do it for the next three or four days. And then you'll start to feel the shift. And the more often we do it, then the better we are going to feel and the more we're going to get deep, deep down and address that trauma. So I will see you in the next video.